Uh, welcome back, Ben. Vivat Grendel. Vivat Grendel, Eli. Vivat Grendel, Ben. Welcome back, everyone. This is The Devil in Detail, issue six. It's our Grendel reread comic book podcast. Oh, yeah. Welcome We've, back. We nice finally uh, we finally wrapped up um, like the very first beginning origins of Comico Volume 1, and then a massive two-parter of Devil by the Deed, and we're going to dive into the Black, White, and Red series from 1998. Yes. And um, so we were deciding like whether how we're going to do it, whether we're going to go by the comics, whether we're going to go by the the um, the way they did it in the omnibus. And um, we reached out to Matt. Okay, so this is what Matt said. He said, yep, black, white, and red stories were arranged in story chronologically, even though they weren't orig- originally published that way. One of the nice aspects of the omnibus editions. Right, so all the stories jumped around and all the issues, but this is just black, white, and red. So they organized that chronologically. And then again, they'll do that for red, white, and black. Yeah, and I guess that this is where that storytelling system of Hunter Rose is black, white, and red was kind of cemented. Absolutely. Um, and, and another thing I like is that, you know, I don't know if it's up until this point, but largely the saga moves forward chronologically with a few loop backs for Batman Grendel and uh, Batman Grendel 2. But this is a real loop back in 1998 to, to do some heavy hitting Hunter Rose stuff with a host of guest artists. Exactly. And to fill in some holes and to even elucidate on single panel, single pages, actions that happened that we see in Black, White, or that we see in uh, Devil by the Deed. Yeah, yeah. But before all that, Ben, what'd you do this week? Oh, geez. Well, I watched There Will Be Blood uh, on Netflix. Great film. And I thought about Grendel, of course. Ah, like Um, if there was a Grendel back then? Oh, very cool. Well, I mean, I saw connections between um, Daniel Day-Lewis's character, who's kind Bill of... Bill the Butcher. Yeah, he's kind of warped and corrupted so by good. violence and greed and, like, the need to dominate in business. And, and also he, honor. Also honor. Oh, yeah, sure. And then, he, <laughs> and then also, he, he also has a kid in his life who he, um, you know... Uh, ah, Stacey and, and... Yeah, he, he's... He says, I needed a sweet face to make deals with, and, <laughs> which is really crazy. He's such a, he's such a bad guy. Um, also, on Sunday night, um, I had the worst nightmare of my life, thanks to Twin Peaks. <laughs> oh, my God. Bob is the worst. I was literally taken to hell. Um, and uh, there was some kind of torture with Bob. Someone was screwing something into the center of my forehead and... Um, I woke up and it was like a waking dream where I had to wake up twice. So I, it's like that first issue of Sandman where you wake up and then, oh, oh. Ah! <laughs> and I woke up and I had the pain in my head and it was, it was not good. Oh my God. So I have not rewatched Twin Peaks. You haven't gone back. No. You're like, that's enough. Thanks. It's, I, I don't even know. What did you do this week? <laughs> Um, I worked on a lot of mini comics stuff for myself. I printed a bootleg version of Ed P. Score's Red Room as he's been releasing pages on uh, the, pat- the Patreon. Uh, this dude that works at the comic book shop messaged me. He's like, I want that so bad. And so I just gave it to him. I, didn't. I read it. That's what I wanted out of it. And so I just passed it on. You put it on aged newsprint? Yeah, I have... Um, I have this like this is a page that messed up, but I have this aged newsprint that I bought from online. It's pretty cool. This is like a page I did for uh, Christian J. Musi. Chris ordered some stuff off, off me, and I, I made a special zine for him. This is like an old journal page from 2004 when I was traveling. Always making. Always making. Always be making ABM. Always, ABM. <laughs> Always be making ABM. Nice. That's what I do. Super um, cool. Got some books, you know. Got a got a um, kind of a grail book. <sighs> Mackenzie Queen by Bernie Morrell. Been waiting on reading this for a while. Tell me about this book. I I don't know anything, Ben. All I know is that it's Bernie Morrell's pre-jam sci-fi epic. That's all I know. I kind of have kept myself in the dark about it because I was like psyched to read it. Yeah, I, I you know the, uh, the synchro mystic kayfabe effect. Uh, taught me about that book. All of a week and a half ago. 
and I was finding it cheap on, uh, you know, I think, my comic I think, shop. Uh, yeah, I think I was looking at uh, Mile High. Ah, oh, they're good too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you use the coupon code DC sucks, you get fifty percent off. Fifty. <laughs> Something like that. My buddy was Damn. just showing me, showing me his haul today where he got uh, Slash Maraud and Gumby yes. Summer Fun Special. Oh, love that. All by that Art Adams. Yeah, yeah. I, I picked up a Grendel hole, a hole in my Grendel collection, which is this classic um, wordless. Oh, that's the silent issue. Yeah. Let's go to the two shot. There we go. Classic gold or classic. Uh, and then I picked up another one inspired by this yeah. very cast, Ellery. And, and because I've been right, reading um, a Michael T. Gilbert, um, re reading his Mr. Monster. And so he yeah. drew that. So then. Dude, and, and I, I got this other one. Sorry, one more that that features a Matt story in it. Oh, but it's cool. it's by the comic book Legal Defense Fund Defense Fund, who had some issues in the news Ooh. this month. Oof, this week. A lot of a lot of that happening in comics yeah. recently. Uh be excellent to each other. Beautiful. What, uh, what, what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> like uh, uh don't harass each other, don't be awful to each other. It should go without saying. It really should. Um, but yeah. positions of power make people do crazy things and they lose sight and it's fucking terrible. What a segue into Grendel. Hit me with that intro. It's like the devil is my best friend. Hunter Rose with the pen to the fork end. Or to time end. Like Orion, Jupiter, my kin, bloodline private. We control the whole shit. The wolf won't beef, then we feast off the rip. Behold the devil in detail. Behold the devil in detail. All right, word. What a great theme song, Ben. You still cranking it every week? Uh, at still? least once a week now. Well, yeah, when we take. <laughs> yeah man yeah. Uh, it's so good well our um, first yeah let's why don't we just dig right in we're gonna we're gonna shoot for we're we're uh, we've planned for four we're ready for five and a half stories yeah i think yeah. on depending on how long it takes us to get through them the first one is by uh tim sale it's the devil's advocate the devil's advocate ben you really did a uh, a lot of work with this story this week so tell us about some of your research. Wikipedia says that it won the 1998 Eisner for best short story. Really? Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty good. It's um, it's a it's a wonderful mid late 90s Tim Sale ink wash story about. For I, you see, am Grendel's lawyer. Yeah, man. Um, and uh, let's let's front load Tim Sale a little bit. I think most people our age know him best from his Marvel and DC work. Definitely. I've got, I've got this uh, 1998 hardcover of Long Halloween. Beautiful. Well, well loved. That's my name backwards, or maybe not. <laughs> it should be frontwards. That yeah, way, no my, one steals it. My uh, my grandfather got this one for me, and it was 30 bucks back then, which was like 60 bucks back in the day. Very nice. Yeah. I, I loved, uh, you know, I was a big wizard reader and, and they were all over this first Batman Maxi series. Um, I, I tend to like the second one a little bit more. I always, I, I still don't really understand what happens at the end. Um, you know, I think that some oh, which of the- Which is the second one? The, uh... the second one's Dark Victory and it's, okay, it's, yeah. it's about bringing in Robin. It's a, it's a great continuation. It's got the, the Falcone- uh, kids ah uh, that's right crime yeah. kids um the skinny one gets out of prison and all that but at the end of this first one like it's revealed that like gilda dent did some of the murders and harvey dent did some of them it, it doesn't it doesn't make a ton of sense from my <laughs> yeah. recollection and and also i probably read it before like i'd seen all those classic mob movies so, uh, so it did not make sense. Well, like the references. Well, I thought it was cool, and then I and then I saw those movies, and I read it, and it goes, "Oh, he just ripped off all these scenes." <laughs> Jeff Loeb, Jeff Loeb just ripped off all these scenes from Coppola. So, yeah, it's a good so, place to rip stuff from. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. He um, also did a lot of great work 
with Marvel doing like Hulk gray, Spider-Man blue, Daredevil yellow, uh, Captain America red, white. The yeah. unfortunately named Captain America white. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're all they're all great stories. Um, I I think I think that like on the on the most part, like all like comic book artists are my draw. Like I don't read comics for the writers unless they're like Alan Moore, Grant Morrison, Neil Gaiman. Right. Maybe Jonathan Hickman sometimes. Everyone kind of looks for different things, I think, Agreed. in the in the reader hobby. I, I'm drawn to artists, so like I don't need to read these Jeff Loeb stories to get enjoyment out of the books. Um, I have a really good Tim Sale story to tell you, actually. Um, we, met, we met him at a Comic-Con. Uh, it was like Megacon in like 2000, like 10 or something when I had first met Shay. Uh, the first day we went and met him and he drew, he drew this really great, um, like I told him I wanted to get a, a Grendel tattoo. I actually happen to have my giant thing of art from that time period. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, I asked him to draw a tattoo design for me. He did this, which I still may get. It's pretty amazing. And um, so we talked to him and I was like, you know, you know I bought a, I bought a, um, a spot for like, you, you get like, you, you bought like an hour of his time and he would draw you something in that hour of time and hang out with you and chat and we like videoed it and stuff. And so we did that, got this. Ooh. Grendel ink wash that he did Hunter Rose for me to Eli, which is nice. I like to get that. So then the next day, Shay and I cosplayed as Hunter Rose and Christine Spar Grendel. I had two of the Grendel masks from the graffiti designs, you know, the plastic one. And um, I have those. I don't know why I've never broken those out. Um, but so we had those. We had we had black everywhere. Shay had these cool boots and like you know, we looked awesome. And we had also drank a lot. We both had like Minute Maid, like Minute Maid things that were like, you know, all vodka and like a little bit of Minute Maid. And they just let us bring them in. Bring them in. They didn't check drinks back then. So we were getting fairly lit up. Um, at, at About in the middle of the day, when we were feeling some of our best, we both had forks and we both just pulled up to Tim Sale's table, posted on each side and start and just like, were there being funny, like almost as guard. And I think we had told him like, but the day before, like, yeah, we're coming back tomorrow. We're both going to be grand goals and we're going to come see you. And so he was laughing. He was all about it. And he was like, you'll need to check with my grand goals before you come in. And, and so we, we would like, like cross our sticks and stuff. And we were kind of like guarding Tim sales table as these two grand goals completely trashed. And we ran around that day having a lot of fun. And, and I've just, I've loved Tim Sale ever since. He was so cool that day. He did such a great drawing. And so I hold a, I hold a spot in my heart for old Tim. Cool. And he, he goes did. on to do a lot of great Grendel work with uh, God and the Devil, the Devil's Reign. Devil's Reign? Devil's with Reign. The Jupiter Asani stuff. And then there's other, there's other corporate stuff. It might be before Orion. Um, I haven't read it yet. So I'm, it's, it's one of those things that I'm super excited. It's sitting on my shelf. I've looked at them. Haven't really dug into them yet. So, Wait, what did you say you haven't read yet? You haven't read the Orion Asante stuff? No, it's like, the, it's like issues 21 and 22. It's like right after the incubation years. Oh, okay. Hidden I, tracks or something like that? Is may, that maybe. I, I'm not sure. There's Devil's a, there's, tracks. There's also, well, and cool. then, yeah, that, that's going to be exciting. And then, of course, uh, he, he hits us with that like mature, fully formed style on devil child with uh, teddy christensen on colors and diana schutz beautiful yeah. unbelievable although i'm not excited to read that i'm excited to hopefully get diana on the show yeah, she, she can read it <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, um all right so tell, tell us more about what you figured out about the story what your research brought did you oh yeah right so about? my i i asked my uh my father who's an attorney to read it and uh he gave us some thoughts, but I, I also made him read Devil by the Deed also because to he read it. Background. Yeah, just to figure it out. So this is, this is from, uh, from, from old Pete. Here we go. Ben, you asked me for a review of The Devil's Advocate, part of the Grendel series by Matt Wagner. I suppose you asked for a lawyer's perspective on the story. Insofar as I am a lawyer, I guess I was a natural target or source of inquiry. The lawyer character in the story is a trial lawyer. 
I am not a trial lawyer. I have a commercial and real estate practice, real estate documents, contracts and the like. So I don't go to court and I don't engage in what non-lawyers may think of as the theatrics and drama of the courtroom. I did different theatricals when you were a kid. You played Muckle the Tailor in uh, Fiddler. Fiddler. Nevertheless, I'd say I have a perspective. And obviously, I, I know that my father's not a litigator. That was not a surprise to me. Yeah. The character of the lawyer as professional is drawn in popular imagination of the expert and brilliant advocate, highly successful and skilled, a Perry Mason type, but with more hype here. Fine. I know many such lawyers without the hype aspect and certainly without the kind of baggage and personal life that this guy uh, has that apparently got him into trouble in the first place. Um, it is, <laughs> to my father, it is not clear um, in the storyline why he'd engage in the extracurriculars given what he had in his life and lifestyle already, but it's part of the setup, so my father will allow it. <laughs> we'll get there. I am also somewhat informed by, by my experience of about 25 years of being steered by my intrepid son, that's me, towards alternate forms of comics. I grew up with the usual treasure trove of superhero comics, drawn in particular to Marvel types with a serious turn towards Nick Fury in War and Espionage. Uh, the alternate and darker forms that trended later were eye-opening in art and storytelling. I think he's talking about Storanko even when I couldn't devote a lot of time to them for one or another of the usual reasons, life usually breaks up your whole day. Often I would thumb through uh, to focus on art to see how the visual story unfolded, which is funny, that's exactly how I read comics. Just the pictures, none of the words. <laughs> so that's what I first did here at Habit. The art is terrific, it brings out the dark vibe. It isn't overdone, so it is direct, and it draws the eye, it draws the eye forward into the sequencing. Some of the panel is uniform, um, but I don't think that as a distraction. I think he means the, the use of the grid and the timing. Um, so the high-powered lawyer is drawn into some nefarious work for the mob with regrets later. The premise, blackmail by Grendel, is understandable. Even though the lawyer confesses all of this to his wife, who accepts and forgives him, the reader is left to wonder what else Grendel is holding over his head. Dad, he's gonna kill the guy. Given Grendel's super crime boss background previously established, I guess we can assume it could be anything and maybe worse. Although some, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, all in all, it was an entertaining short story that combines the mystery of shadowy char character Grendel with mundane organized crime issues and the lawyer who gets caught in the middle. I have known a few lawyers who represented alleged mobbed guys one or two were uh, investigated and indicted. It happens. A few thoughts on the lead-in story. This is Devil by the Deed. The writing and storytelling put me in mind of the narrator in 300. I'm not sure why, but maybe the style suggested this to me. I understand that Frank Miller has been one of Matt Wagner's influences, so maybe it makes sense. My dad is curious about Hunter's fascination with Stacy. It reminded me of Jean Valjean taking on guardianship of Eponine in Les Miserables. Valjean had a checkered past, but moved his life toward righteousness despite being pursued by Inspector Javert. Grendel slash Hunter moves in the opposite direction, being pursued finally uh, by Argent. Curious what stories influenced Wagner's development of these characters and the story. Well, I hope this hopes with the, next pods, uh, with the next podcast, good luck. And as my dad used to sign my letters to summer camp, El Mustachio. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's dig into this. Let's do it. I love Tim Stell's stuff. I think Beautiful. the ink wash is super cool. The style's super cool. Really moody, great storytelling. Perfect like, for Grendel and for- Absolutely. The, the like noir feel. One of the, one of the top caliber, caliber artists in this saga and you know i would i would mention that for the our friends in the wednesday crowd probably the biggest artist that they would recognize having participated yeah participated in in, in the whole cycle in the saga yeah. like on a long-term basis for sure cool cool so this uh this lawyer he 
He opens up lamenting. He used to love Twilight. Um, the vampire uh, novels. He's a big yeah, reader. He yeah. loves vampires. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but um, it, it brings him only dread. The devil's at his doorstep. He's brought him. He's looking at Grendel's business ledger. The devil's advocate. Ooh. The night only brings dread, and by that he means Judge Dread graphic novels from the 2000 AD. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Two comic, ra- or well, Twilight's not a comic. The uh, shit. The, ink, the ink wash here uh, oh, is, is super cool. I the the spot that kind of like. First of all, sales art's so cool. It's so spontaneous. It's so like free. It doesn't, it, it looks like he's having a lot of fun. It looks like a lot of work. Um, I love the shadow on the, on the pen on his desk. Oh, wow. Just like you can see the rim of it is darker, just like the way he uses the medium and uses the, the wetness and the pigment is like, I'm not totally sure how you control it just like that. Uh, we'll have to do some experiments. Well, you know, when I watched him draw this thing, he, he would do a lot of those ink washes in. So it, mm-hmm. I feel like I, I kind of watched him, you know, he does that thing where he dips the ink and then puts it in the water and then, you know, dilutes it. I, I haven't done a lot of ink wash stuff myself. After I watched him, I got super inspired and tried a few pieces, but maybe I'll what? put a little bit of the video of that because I have the full video of him drawing Ooh. that. Maybe I'll throw some into this. If That'd be cool. Yeah. One, of the, one of the ink wash tricks that I was kind of approaching what I'm talking about here, really liking, was using a water-soluble Derwent watercolor pencil. Hmm. And to just kind of lay in some shading and then push and pull it with the, with the water. Um, Interesting. I was, yeah, my, um, my uh, Cats of Ulthar H.P. Lovecraft adaptation is done all in that method. That's, we need to do like trade comics, Ben. I don't have any of your stuff. We say well, this a lot. Let's well, once I get the nerve to leave my house, it's been 110 days. I'll get I'll get myself to the post office. Okay, dude. All right, cool. It's been 110 days since you've gone outside at all. Well, not not outside at all, but since I've like gone anywhere, we did a we did a visit uh, with our friends and my godchildren um, this weekend. So we walked half an hour to their apartment, and we'd walk through Greenwood Cemetery, which is a block away. But, nice. and then, and then we're getting, uh, we're going to go to Massachusetts um, for the, a week and a half starting. Nice. Going to drive or something. My, yeah, my mom is going to drive down and then I'm going to drive us back. Nice. And on the way, I'm going to pick up my, my comics. Including yes. My, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what you need. More comics. I got a, I got a, a, a grip of uh, Mr. Monsters and of course my Matt Wagner Batman on the bus waiting for me. Yeah. When is that coming out? It came out on Wednesday. Oh, snizzle. I guess my uh, local store didn't get it, but hopefully they'll have it next week. Yeah, man. So anyway, so this guy, I think his name is Richard... Roundtree. Yeah, Richard Roundtree. It no. wasn't always this way. <laughs> he's, he was a, a, he's an actor. He's a, he's a, feared, uh, a feared litigator. And um, we see him in this nice big panel uh, with some really nice... Uh, what you call that force perspective? I don't know. Some, the perspective is really guiding your eye... For sure. towards towards him and then through his arm to like his his people yeah to, to the guy he's defending i suppose um i love i love how tim sale kind of dresses these guys up in these like big bulky three-piece suits and like the shadows on the vest he really continued that um into some of his batman work yeah Joker for designs, sure and uh and yeah. then i mean he's a big time lawyer he he wins he's got a private practice he's got juicy accounts and also he's got some other juiciness in these lower pages yeah yeah he's got this is the first we got the home life um with his giant pool his house in the hamptons and you know every time i see this panel it reminds me of um uh, jordan belfort's home and the gold coast of long island and the wolf of wall street which i always give a boston accent to for whatever reason (laughs) I haven't um, seen that yet. I haven't seen that. Oh, yet. it's great. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, he plays a guy with similar wealth. And then and of course your ends. your favorite panel. Misty. On, yeah. Yeah, Misty. The My girl God, with the, that girl could swallow, he said. Yeah. The girl with the tattoo. Um, yeah. So I mean, so it's just showing that he's he's infidel. He's an infidel. Is that how you say it? No. I like it. I like it. <laughs> 
just that, you know, he's living this big, bigger than life lifestyle. He's got both sides, the, you know, proper white picket fence in the Hamptons. And he's also has this debauchery side to him where he's probably ripping lines and, and uh, talking to hookers and when, yeah, uh, and, we can't and, expect that about Misty. We don't know what her job is. She could have any type of job. Honestly, she just might like this lawyer. Yeah. She delivers telegrams. Um, and you know, and, and when things are going so good, just, just when you don't expect it, the other shoe drops. Mm, Grendel. Richard Branfield gets a, for his eyes only package. Oh my God. Yes. What is this? Signed G. G. Oh God. Just like Dracula in, uh, you know, D, your friend D. I always think of Zorro. Oh yeah, Zorro. Yeah. This is all, all, all in the Wagner wheelhouse. Yeah. Wagner Anyways, wrote so, that great uh, Zorro Django story with Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, man. Bomb stuff. Um, so uh, it's got these blackmail photos of him and the girl. Nice, uh, nice ink wash. I have need of your services if you accept. Hang a white handkerchief from your office window. Oh my god! Oh you can my god. feel the guy's like heart racing. Like, Jesus, what am I gonna do? And so he burns the photos. And then I, this is not what I would have expected at all. He straight up goes right to his wife, and he's like, "Dude, I went home and I came clean. I like." sex with other women, nose drugs, and just a lot of different stuff. Click yeah, Studio 54. I, I, get the, I get the feeling that it's a one income household. And uh, it's just like, she says she gets it. Like the pressures of his job, their too perfect lifestyle, you know, it messes up their marriage. But, you know, if you want to keep up appearances, yeah. sometimes you got to eat the bar, you know? Yeah. The wife took it. <laughs> ah, I get it. And sometimes the bar eats you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so Grendel didn't take kindly to that. But um, we see him now in this next panel kind of looming over in a, in a very, it's very symbolic of how Grendel is now looming over his life. Yeah. You know, we can see him reflected in the giant mirror. They really should put all these candles out before they go to bed, though. It's really dangerous. Right. I found the candles a little strange because it's like uh, maybe it's from makeup, makeup sex. I, I, <laughs> I, I do not know. He's trying um, to set the mood. One thing that I really enjoy about these, about all this, all the guest artists that come into the saga, is you know it seems like Matt is very inviting for them to kind of put their own visual spin. For sure. Um, and so you know Tim Sale does the super long bandanas if that um, were a ninja turtle i would think that would be by eric talbot or something mm, he's always doing super those cool. super swirly um, ones like that and he did that in his pinup too in black white and red or in devil by the deep mm -hmm. and i also these these really creepy scissors that probably don't work in real life <laughs> yeah you know they look like a grendel mask um oh wow so yeah they do really really cool really cool um, I also like now that we can see Richard Branfield like tortured in bed, um, you know, he really, those suits are real, like David Byrne, real baggy. He's not a, you know, he's a, a, a guy. lean guy, you know, so that's just the, it's like a, a zoot suit. Suits. Yeah. 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 It's a cross between the two. Super cool. Um, anyway, so. Um, he gets back into his family life. He's drinking some coffee kids are at the That's table having oh yeah some cocoa krispies some my little chicken chicka does yeah based this off is a, the famous novel my little chickadee i love uh i love how lavish the home is with the uh, giant windows and giant drapes yeah. um and this is you know, super high up in some new york apartment building that he's living mm -hmm. in, in yeah yeah house. and then we see ben what those grendel eye scissors were for yeah, man, the the kids and the wife are all complaining about missing locks of their hair, <laughs> yes. which is very funny because, um, you know, when I read this, when I read this, I see that thing first and say, what, is she putting on an earring or brushing her hair? What's, what's going on? And then when you read it, you're able to, to make the very specific connection. It's like, oh, absolutely. They're, she's inspecting her hair. But that's that's when it changed for him, and and he hung the he hung the white um, thing outside of his window. Yeah, he gets the same 
the same message. I have need of your services. If you're going to comply, do such and such with the hair taped in. And I love that this is where the red comes in for the first time. Right. Um, it's so cool. That's another really cool thing about these stories is how everyone uses the red. Some use it sparsely. Some use it like just once. Some use it throughout the whole thing. And it's yeah. really powerful when it's used. It, There's two panels in Tim's sale and they, they're the only ones that don't have any ink wash. Oh, interesting. Good, good point. Yeah. So it's red except for the white handkerchief. And I love the head game that Hunter is playing with this lawyer. Like what could be more humiliating and like subservient than hang a white, hang a surrender flag out of your right. office window. A oh, it's white really, handkerchief. yeah, really great. Really great. Anyway. And on the next day it showed up. Yeah. The it's, ledger. It's, it's this handwritten ledger filled with every nefarious deed that Grendel could ever do. Um, I wonder if Christine Spar gets a hold of that later or what happens to it. Oh, that. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, and so then we, he's, he's working for him. And then Hunter is like lounging and looming over Richard as he, as he does his work. I, I really love how Tim Sale leans into like the sleekness. There's Super almost sleek. very stylized in yeah. Hunter. And there's almost a uh, like an androgynous quality hmm. to like the slope of his back and dead ass. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's not it and, blah. yeah, it's really he's really he really enjoys lording lording over uh, Richard. <laughs> oh my god, you know what I just noticed? I'm not even wearing a Grendel shirt. I didn't even put my Grendel shirt on this week. Ah bummer. Blue anyway, streak. so as soon as Richard hits the the courthouse defending these mob types in the name of Grendel. You can see the bags under his eyes. He feels terrible and like um, he's, he's become what every advocate dreads, a mob lawyer. All his peers think he's disgusting. Um, he's available at all hours to do whatever heinous deed and the family life is gone. The devil's business became my only cause, his needs my only concern. Damn, there it goes. And, and, and you see the sadness in his face as well while yeah. Grendel is standing there watching him do the most boring possible thing you could oh, do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Crunch yeah, Grendel, numbers. Grendel could have done that. I mean, it's not like he was busy. He just needs to lord over Richard as he does his business from the rooftop. Oh, oh yeah. What, what a bastard. And then became the most painful part of my convert, conversion, performing his dance in public in court. So this is really what he needed him for was to help get his people out. And so really they turned this like good lawyer into a shrill, a shill for the mob and for the, the Grendel clan. Yeah. Well, he, he might've been a, a good lawyer, but he wasn't a moral guy. Yeah. True. You know, I, and cause he, I mean, he was e not easily corrupted, but I mean, it, I guess, and you can see it in his face, you know, he's got these bags under his eyes now. Yeah. I mean, Hunter, Hunter could have gotten anyone. He could have gone and said, I'm, I'm Grundel. You've heard of me. I want you. Get out of line and you're dead. You're dead. He could have said that to anyone, yeah. you know. Anyway, so um, finally Grendel's enemies catch wind of Richard. They knew him. They had the gun to his head. Richard's praying. I love the lettering here, how it breaks down word for word. So sweet. It's like, it's almost like um, prayed for the devil to save my soulless skin. Like the when will the rhythmic clapping end? <laughs> and this is great too. The, this next panel of Grendel's beautiful and, and obviously begs the question, from what battle did this broken arm come? Did we see yeah. it? Did we, is it referenced in, is it in Devil by the Deed? I think everyone who reads this asks that question. And I second guess, like, there is a story where he gets a busted up wing. And I'm like, hmm. or am I just confusing him with Spider-Man? Like, you know, I, <laughs> it's such a great detail, though, to, to show that he's great, yeah. busy, he's active, he's, he's not afraid. Even with a broken arm, he still has confidence in his ability to render these, these demands, these, these yeah. contracts, these, you know. The uh, the cast shadow on the ceiling of the of his figure, 
of the bookshelves and of the the bandana ties is is super cool. In that V, that that really defiant like angular thing is is mm-hmm. reminiscent again of Devil by the Deed of the kind of yeah like, man uh, yeah man beautiful. So he stands over them, you know. Thank God Grendel just happened to be there, and these guys are scared. Neither of them ever stood a chance. The blood-soaked Persian rug had been an antique. I paid $40,000 for it only last year. Two hours later, it lay at the bottom of the East River, and my transaction to hell became complete. So do you, so do you think that uh, like Hunter gave him any help in depositing those bodies? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like... All himself. Well... I feel like Hunter took it. Like he killed these guys and then he rolled it up and then maybe some goons or something took it. I, I don't think that the lawyer guy took it to the bottom. I, I just think he like, he oh, oh, okay. took the whole thing. I actually, you know. Okay. I actually read it in my devious mind. <laughs> he <laughs> he made him the guys get rid of the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think Grendel's one of those dudes that if he, if he, if he brings you on and if you're part of his crew, he's going to take care of you. He's not going to fuck you over. He's not going to make you, he's not going to, make you worry about you know getting you know taken down he's going to keep you safe he's going to probably get him paid he's gonna he's gonna take care of him yeah man and then just this bottom row love it yeah yeah that and it's funny because that motif is much more present later on with the clans right right yeah yeah so this is like this is an early showing of that there was room for nothing else. He comes home. He stands in the doorway of the house, and Carrie There's is taking letter. the kids. Peace out. I'm at my sister's house. Yeah. They always go to the sister's house. I remember he, loving Twilight in red. Yeah. Super this time cool. he doesn't mean the novels. Yeah, right. This is not about <laughs> Stephanie Meyer. Yeah. So that's, that's is that a, the author? Have you read those books? Many times. Really? No, I don't know. So that's a great story. I mean, we, re- we really went page by page on that one. We may not do that for every of the short stories. Yeah, man. Any final Tim Sale thoughts? No, it's, it's, it's good. It's a fantastic uh, Tim Sale treatment. I think that, um, I think I, I had read that Matt had written another story for Tim Sale, but it, it included like a decapitated Oh yeah, Matt told us that on the, on the uh, yeah, like one. a headless woman, and Tim Sale's like, I don't really want to do that. The funny thing about I think John Paul Leone ended up drawing that is that the same the blowjob panel is like the same composition as in both stories, which is kind of funny. It yeah, is. it's fantastic. It's, I think it's, Tim made the right move anyway because he got to re, you know draw this Eisner nominated. Yeah, you get the Eisner Eisner out of winning. It. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Next up, we have Teddy Christensen, Devil Ooh. on My Back. Really Teddy fun. Christensen's fantastic. Yeah. He what has, has he such done? A... What's his history? I'm not super familiar. Uh, more Grendel. Right. Um, oh, then, that's right. And then him, I think it was him and Steven Siegel, his Grendel collaborator, um, uh, did a bunch of House of Secrets, House of Mystery, Vertigo stuff, mid, oh. uh, late 90s, early 2000s Vertigo stuff. Cool. So maybe that's um, what they were known for at this time when they did. Yeah, this. I think he's Scandinavian and he's done a lot of painting and animation work in Europe. I could be totally wrong about that, hmm. um, but you know, here the thing is, it's done in this really scratchy style um, story called "Devil on My Back," and you know, it's uh, it's it's a really raw primal style his four devils one hell work is airbrushed into Dang. heaven it's one of my it's one of our favorite comics ever and this one's fantastic too but it's not quite as like it's really completely like different to think about and to, to think it's even the same person uh he's yeah. he's very like you said scratchy stylized and you know this is the first real view we get of hunter as a kid mm-hmm. and his his child life yeah. Um, yeah. So he's, uh, it, it, the story cuts back and forth between uh, a young Eddie and maybe a later Hunter. I think he's, he's gained a little bit of power. He's not, he's not the assassin. He might, he's in charge of warehouses. And I think Larry's in the story. Yeah. So it's after that, 
it's at the point where Grendel's established and Larry's is helpful. Larry is being helpful. Right. And, and his warehouses are being burned down or something. So maybe this is around the time that, that um, Stacy's like giving information to the cops and they're like burning down his warehouses. Maybe, you know, I think that what happens here is that there's the, the guy Grendel deduces that the guy that's burning down the warehouses is um, like a, a pyromaniac. He, it's not like a, it's a random guy who wants to see the world burn. And uh, Grendel can understand that, you know? So there's, he's, he kind of finds uh, a weird kinship in this like kind of psychotic guy because he remembers those feelings from being a bullied young man. How old do you think young Eddie is supposed to be? Uh, in I'm this? saying, I'm thinking maybe middle school or maybe like, you know, six, he's in sixth grade, and these are like seventh and eighth graders. Yeah, it's he. He's drawn to look a little younger, but his bullies look older, and they certainly talk like yeah, late middle school kids. They call him Puss Face, Eddie yeah. Puss Face, Eddie yeah, the yeah. Puss Face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are um, major and, assholes. And here's and they, this: uh, the devil, the literal, the literal figurative devil, is sitting on on Eddie's shoulder and that's where the red that's where the red comes in right and um you know it's 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 surely like a storytelling device not as like I was trying to previously say though like oh this is a real demon that's like scouting this new child yeah, you know? it's a metaphor it's yeah pretty pretty clear yeah as much as I want to uh feel right and justified in my beliefs well, the first panel of the so Allred good. story is really gonna throw us for a loop uh, yeah well. <laughs> You never know. You never know. Yeah, anyway, I mean, so Eddie Eddie gets uh, he gets bullied to hell, mm -hmm. and um, he's brilliant. He's 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 read Shakespeare and Tolstoy, and he can imagine killing his bullies. My God. Oof. And I mean, they're picking at his like his skunk spot, and they're making him, and and then we flash back to uh, a high society party. Yeah, it's um, it looks like it's uh. Hunter's swanky pad. I don't know. Or maybe they're ready. They're always ready to go out. It's uh, the red is the wine right. and help helpful. Larry is uh, doing his thing. They're talking about the guy that's burning down the warehouses. Um, you know, this, this Teddy Christensen stuff, it, it almost reminds me of um, like advertising illustration in oh, a way. Okay. Right. Like, Super stylized. Yeah. Maybe like that, like raggedy line, um, like 1950s minimal kind of and stuff. And I mean, he even gets even more scratchy, like when it's the flashbacks, almost to, to be like, you know, this is a kid and, and it's almost drawn like a kid would draw. Mm, interesting. It's very, very um, sparse and childlike. And yeah, yeah. We're and continuing the, to see, you know, young Eddie tormented. That actually makes a lot of sense because the shadow work that he does in the present on the faces and stuff is, right. is you don't see any of that in the, on the torment, but what you get with Eddie is the way he treats the hair, has kind of that dry ink, yes, stuff on it. Yeah. And he, anyway, so so Eddie has this uh, this devious plan to get back at his bullies. It's a hot summer day, and it's he hooks pretty up, smart. He hooks up a gas a gas canister to the the sprinklers, and his bullies are that they're running through. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow, dude. And I mean, they get covered. They get covered in it. Yeah, and, and, they, and they realize it too. And we, we're flashing right back and forth to Grendel. So it's like two panels, Grendel, two panels, kid, two panels, mm. Grendel. Yeah, the pacing of the flashback goes from like page to page, and then like tier to tier. Right. Once the once the pace quickens up. Right. I love and some the, of the I, tiers. There's actual tiers within those tiers. There's there are tiers of tiers. That's right. It's not so great. I, I love the shadows on this pyromaniac's face and on his bottle and the way Christensen handles that. And just like his line, you know, this is like a deceptively simple style because every millimeter you can feel his wrist kind of, kind of jagging it. Beautifully done. Great yeah, cartooning. Real, really cool. Really cool. So anyway, um, you know, Hunter realizes that he's, 
the 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 pyro guy is barely a teenager so familiar you know he sees himself in him and he also sees the devil on this guy's shoulder right and he's and he's you know this isn't just a flashback for us i feel like it's like maybe a flashback that all happens in hunter's head right about here and yes you know he's like flashing back to when he used fire to get his way perhaps one of the first times that he learned that you know, power can bring fear in those around you or something like that. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I love this panel of him flicking up the lighter. I, I guess it, it's, it's not clear if it's supposed to be like a Zippo or a Bic, but it's effective either way. I, right. I really like it. It's, it's a very, you know, just like how um, Tim Sale draws a, a skinny figure inside baggy clothes, Teddy Christensen does a great job with the same kind of idea. Uh, in this story yeah uh and, and, and you know now we're going panel for panel back and forth and, mm. you know. and uh, then, yeah and then the guy i mean we we can read this he's like i'm the fucking hand of destruction i'm the living flame in the night you can never stop me Bruh! sets the fire and then you see beautiful red panel grendel being like yeah yeah this is this reminds me of michael myers giving that kind of <laughs> yeah. Hallow Halloween Mike Myers. Oh, he um, does kind of have like a crick. He, he's just kind of like, huh, he's you know. Like, cool. Great. So, uh, you know, he'll let this guy's demons roam. It's something else he understands. He, he has such such kinship in this in this guy. Wow. Yeah. Just a, not another. Our, yeah. Not our last. Not the last time we'll see Teddy Christensen um, For on sure. this podcast. Cool. Uh, give Next me your story, yo. Give me your, your Mike Allred love fest. If I had to guess, Allred <laughs> is probably in your top five favorite I'll, cartoonists of all time. Yeah, I'm going to definitely say that. And, and perhaps, Matt, I'm sorry, perhaps on the same tier as Matt Wagner. Oh, you apologize for putting it on the same tier. Wow. <laughs> well, no, because I didn't know if Matt was like, oh, I'm Eli's favorite artist. Yeah, right. So he's thinking about that all the time, you know. What, so. do, you, what do you like about Allred <laughs> so much? Um, I think I think one thing is, and this is shout out to my friend Wally, who I have to have on the show because he got me into Grendel and Madman at the same time. Oh, wow. so this is an older dude who worked at the bar Nectars in Burlington, Vermont, when I was working there. He's an older comic book dude, one of those dudes that you know it, it's hard to get to know, but then once you get to know him, he opens up and he's super cool. I love Wally to death, and so he turned me on to these two guys, to, on to Matt Wagner and on to Mike Allred. Now. I, th I think while I know that they're personal friends and they hang out and cook together and stuff, I feel like their styles are, are seemingly very different. Despite the fact that Mike Allred submitted art to Grendel, which did get picked up, which we've talked about before. Uh, I love the wonder, the sense of wonder in Mike Allred's work. The, the creative lines, his pop, pop, culture his pop art influence um this is is an amazing book the atomics giant special uh giant king size giant spectacular jigsaw this is in, in the it's like one of those old you know books you would get at the market it's printed on newsprint you know you would buy like a spider-man book that would have word search in there it'd have a you know crossword it'd have a, a couple mazes and then some comics in it or something like that that's what it feels like to me and it's got this beautiful background and it's all on this like you know beautiful newsprint and i don't know he just Super captures cool. a, the, the things that we used to love about comics with having the complex artistic things like he did a new book called art ops which was about paintings that come to life and like mona lisa's like this punk rocker who comes to life and hangs out in like cbgb's and stuff and oh cool like he's so good at his creation i have this which i recently added to my collection M. Dalton Allred's Dead Air, which is his first published work from Slave oh, wow. Labor. Uh, I haven't read it yet, but um, I'm super psyched on it. It, was, it wasn't cheap. It actually is signed by him, not for me. It says Some for other Mike. Dude. <laughs> but I, I, just love, I just love everything Mike does. X-Ray Robot is his new book coming out right now. Um, Red Rocket 7, which I know you've got right there, Ben. What a glorious work beautiful Boom. and there's nothing i love more than music and comics music in comics i make music comics i love music and comics more than anything else and so when i found red rocket seven i was like oh shit this is 
such an amazing book. It's like rock history, music history, sci-fi, aliens. Oh God. Yeah, Was that enough of a love fest for you? Yeah, Dick? no, that, that sounds, that sounds, that sounds what you're expecting good. about. <laughs> I, I, um, you know, I, I like Mike Allred just fine. Yeah. He's a master. He's for great. Sure. Oh, I didn't even mention his Silver Surfer. Jeez. Oh, yeah. You love his God, it's so good. Um, He's a master. He's great. He's he's not my favorite, but that's not a knock on him. That's just because I have a a hundred other favorite cartoonists. Um, I like his work in this story very much. Um, The place that I, what I used to say about Mike Allred was that it was very jazzy. And I think that. As an adjective, jazzy. Yeah. I think that's because, you know, the first time and place I, I ever read him was like Tundra Madman. Okay. Um, I had that like square bound, like the last issue. I had no idea what it was. And you could still like pick up the story. Um, Madman, Frank Einstein has like incredible, he's incredibly compelling. He's super funny. Lots of pathos. Um, yeah, I love it. And it was like the last issue of the story, and I could still he like recaps everything, and it was it was just as good, super great stuff. Um, I'm also, and I should also mention that like I'm super fascinated by by Mormons. Um, it's just like what a great fit for the like they're all so nice and smart and successful. And, like they're like the all American like religion produced like this all-american guy who worked in the all-american art form and it's all about pop culture and like when mike Allred like kind of presents himself as space face guru of art and pop and comics and pulp i buy it so i'm into it yeah and and the fact that like he said in the interview that i did with him for wizard and what space face kind of became about is these crazy periods of time where he goes into this like, ex- existential um, psychedelic, you know, m- journeys in his mind through different, you know, mental things that goes on in his brain. It's like, he's a, he's a very, very interesting character in and of himself. And he brings all that into Madman. He, he actually literally, this is a real thing from the book. He has one of those little things that comes out of his head from his third eye, like Frank Einstein does. He just helps him see the world. He, he puts it away usually in public, but it's a real thing. I bet you didn't know that. That sounds great. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> and the other thing is that like, you know, his, his physical look has like changed. So much. A lot. And so yeah. when I see photos of him now, I don't recognize him. You don't, didn't know he had full sleeves and stuff. I like, I'm not sure with, if, like, he's the still, if they're still the... Mormon now, though. I think they've had like a. Oh really? Yeah. I have. I, have, I don't uh, know that for a fact, though. I have one of his golden plates books, and it's it's just so fascinating. Like I I love devotional art, and um, like I love the idea that you can put yourself in like any kind of trance, and just like produce, produce, produce. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into this story, man. Right. It's, the Devil's Apogee. Apogee. I had to look up apogee. I think it's a synonym for zenith. It's the oh. highest point you can, highest point you can achieve. I I think. Anyway, it opens up with Eddie in like nineteen early nineteen seventies suburbia, mm-hmm. Midwest like split level homes, and he's watching your your famous Grendel comet crash down to Earth. Mm-hmm. I mean, Eli, you you didn't there call it. Is. it. Yeah, the uh, Grendel. That's actually because in um, you know the early 1900s they shot Grendel had to leave Earth because it's actually uh, inter intergalactic. Yeah, and so it really is. You know, this spirit goes to different planets, and then from that planet it creates its thing. You know, and you know, say he's on some sort of diamond or crystal world, he would create like a crystal Grendel around him. Or wait, is this Alan Moore's Swamp Thing? It is. It, it is. is Alan Moore's it small is. thing. That is such a good story. Anyway, that would be cool if it was like that. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie sits on a hill thinking about his place in the cosmos and, um, and also and like how, how bored he is in, um, you know, 
his place in suburbia much like um man. what is it the uh the blob where those teens are in the woods and they see it come down and oh i don't know i'll have to I'll check that out anyway this is another story that's going to cross cut between Past grendel yeah grendel in action and this is a younger grendel this is a grendel as the as assassin before pre-crime lord right grendel. on his way up yeah, yeah. And, and also here we have the debut of his parents who are just, they seem like suburban drones. He's completely unhappy with them as people. He cares not for them. Their love is bovine and prosaic. <laughs> and pro, I, I also had to Google prosaic. It's the opposite. It's, it's, uh, it's mundane. It's the opposite of poetry. Oh, interesting. I think. I, I, I was thinking, uh, um, had something to do with like Prozac, which is to make you happy. Mm. And so it was like this sort of like stoned happiness, kind of like, like, uh, you know, he's drink. he looks like he's got a beer can and you know, the, wow. his sister's just chilling. So they're just vegged out. Yeah. They're vegetables. Yeah. So anyway, Eddie, it's all so easy to Eddie. Why is he here? When does he shine? And that's when he discovers fencing. It's so great. It's finally, an outlet in volume one it mentions him as a wrestler just like us um but yeah, here that's that. been that's been done away with right and and uh so he meets his teacher he quickly becomes the best at it and then they're talking about you know heading to the world challenge which we all know leads to that faithful meeting yeah it's a, there's actually one thing that he he doesn't the coach um lectures him on not being competitive enough I think that there's a sense that Eddie doesn't, he wants to find an opponent worthy of his talents. Absolutely. Why, why waste your greatness on someone who wouldn't even appreciate the defeat? Well, that's a classic um, thing of over the overachiever is never being challenged by anything. And then in turn, never wanting to give their all because they're like, why would I even mm. do that? I already know exactly this, you know? So that's another thing. It's funny. This is this seems to me like a high school. I don't know. Maybe it's a high school team. I would think and, so. Yeah. And so like how they they get invited to the the London World Championship. Yeah, it was to to me. I got that feeling like he's a freshman and he's the best and he's you know he's on vars. He's like the varsity team leader, but mm -hmm. he's a freshman. You know, he's a quick learner. He quickly yeah. went to like lead them to this worldwide thing to I, fucking Shea. Yeah, I think I think he's supposed to be 14 or 15 oh does it say i i i feel like we've read somewhere anyway oh not. before he becomes grendel you're saying because this is right around the yeah. time he would he would become grendel and and, grendel. and, and Arid draws him young he does you know i really like how he draws grendel's mask as we transfer over to him too it's mm -hmm. it's it's almost like wide-eyed like like um they take a little bit more kind of like how he does his now he does Spider-Man too. Almost, almost like, you know, if oh. the eye things were like eyeballs, they're like wider open. And... Yeah. Yeah. So Grendel in the, in the present is, is staked out to get, uh, to get this guy. To Hashi Fujinama. He's got, you know, his enemies, I don't know. He, his enemies have hired Grendel to take him out. So he lurks, he goes in the ducks and he lurks through the grates. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then back in the past, in the final round of that world championship, he's up against an Argentinian known as the Whip. He's right, he, uh, who looks way older. Yeah, well, he's, he's 12 years older than him. Wow. Um, so that's weird. So what, what would the grade spread? Like, would that mean that this guy's got to be a senior? So 12 years? That doesn't make sense. I think the guy's supposed to be between 28. Well... I, I guess my guess is that Eddie is between fourteen and fourteen and fifteen. So this isn't like a high school tournament. This is like the, a worldwide tournament. It's a world. It says by chance the team got invited to this thing, maybe on the strength of Hunter's on Eddie's scores. Although maybe by the spirit's unseen tension. Yeah, right. So yeah, all yeah, yeah. throughout society, it, it was just meant to be, man. Mm -hmm. It was just meant to be. Maybe um, even Jocasta pulls some background strings that we don't know. Like, 
in in the like world fencing Kabbalah that is actually run by like the lizard cult and the the Grendel cult and Joe Costa is part of that like um, that Kubrick movie uh, with Tom Cruise. There's like a oh, eyes, eyes wide shut. shut type of Kabbalah that yeah. runs the national international fencing team and they're like and you know Joe Costa's like oh look at this new Eddie. As soon as Eddie's blade touches this guy's, he knows he could win if he wanted to. He could toy with this guy as much as he wants. And then in the end, it was not a contest worth his, uh, his while. So he lets the guy win. Yeah. Oh, God. Dejected by his teammates. He doesn't care. Hunter's like, I don't even care. I hate every single one of these guys. Why would I do anything good for them? I'm, I'm so over this. Yeah, and this is when it becomes like kind of a porno fantasy because he's alone in the locker room and Joe Costa Rose, who is twice his coach. age. Yeah, she's a coach for the British team. She's, she just shows up. <laughs> yeah, and he's completely naked. Yeah. And it's like and, that scene in basketball where they turn around and it's like, you remember that? His giant I can, dick. I, this. I, I, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> he really, he's really, he looks like he's 14. He does. Pardon me. I shouldn't be talking about a 14-year-old's yeah. junk. Well, she is. So, you know, what do you want from me? Yeah. Any, anyway, um, she saw through him. She realized his worth. She saw his pain. Oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> and uh, anyway, Grendel, Grendel goes out. He kills this man. guy. He gets his man. Uh, why do stars fall from the heavens only to illuminate the dark and lonely places? very emo, and then to bask in the pale, fresh glow of the moon, the beautiful moon, and the see Joe Costa reflect him. And, and there's also a cool scene where, like, she sees into him, and a lot of times, you know, in, like, fencing uniforms, too, they have, like, the heart here. That's what you have to get. Mm-hmm. And so it, they show that type of thing on his, like, bare chest because yeah, she can see, like, the real heart that was within Eddie, and she needed to wake up the hunter within him. And and he takes her name too, which is like another thing, you know. Yeah. A, a name that records revealed nothing never of. Never existed. And they never. Yes. <laughs> That's so cool. Who's to say? Oh man, I think we're only gonna have time for this last. I this think one so. Last yeah. Story. Once, once we get talking, man, we go. We don't stop. All right. So and this you one, wanted to end on a real banger, so. <laughs> uh yeah man <laughs> ben this one isn't your favorite in the book it's not um, i mean i didn't know you know i know david mack from kabuki Kabuki's like definitely a different type of comic you know to read i didn't know you you were saying he's a tracer i didn't know that i don't well yes i'll um, trace a chalk I, line around your dead fucking I, body tracer i re- <laughs> I read, I read Circle of Blood, the first Kabuki volume, when I was 15, and I loved it. Yeah. And, um, and the range that he displays, it's like virtuosic drawing. There's like it's cartoony beautiful. Michael Golden stuff. There's design stuff. There's painting stuff. It's like all over the place. Yeah, there's like photos of, you know, pressed flowers, or there's yeah, like man. little stuff around. Really creative. And I, and I, read, I read somewhere, maybe in that book, that um, he had done it while he was an undergrad. And that really spurred me on during doing the book that I did uh, as an undergraduate. And when I, when I met him and every other time I've met him, starting at the age of 20, you know, that was 16 years ago or whatever, he was nothing but completely nice to me. And I've never heard anyone say a bad thing about the guy, that he's l- like Allred or Eastman, just like one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. I'm not crazy about his work in this story. Um, I, I just like, I don't, I don't get it. Um, it's another Joe Costa story. It kind of takes place that night. It's the Joe Costa porno story. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I was just praising Allred for drawing a very convincing 14, 15 year old Eddie. And here it just looks like he's tracing david duchovny like i, I mean, don't he looks like and even in this bottom frame here on the second page he looks kind of like patrick bateman or something you know i don't get it yeah 
I think maybe it's I mean I think maybe it's because uh, you don't want to draw like a fourteen year old being statutory raped. Right. Um, but I, I don't know. It's nice guy, supreme talent. This one's not my favorite. I think there's some really creative cartooning going on here with the spirals, and then on the third page here, while they're having sex, there's some really cool words going around like the outer um, boxes. Kind yeah. of like you know, I was reborn in her mouth. You know, right? But it uh, just it just repeats the captions. Oh, it does. So I and I think that yeah, he does I that. That's true. I don't know. It's just like these are all the things I've seen him do in Kabuki. What if and this so, was an editorial decision? Like that's how he made the, well, put the words in there. But then they were like, ah, yo, we need like we got to put these boxes in here, or people aren't going to follow it or something. Matt writes to people's strengths, and true. and I think he's absolutely writing to David Mack's strengths and probably saying, I want you do your thing. This feels like a Kabuki story from the ones that I've read. Um, when he's painting on the fencing foils way on down the road, yeah, there's cool. even, there's like ones that are straight out of Kabuki from, from the looks of it. Oh yeah, um, I thought, oh yeah. I thought those were interesting too. He's like trying out different like masks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, previously, like when they're, you know, after they had sex, they're drinking wine and she's laying here and like they have the kind of like the happiness or the laughter and the sadness, the um, the stage masks, you know, the um, mm -hmm. like the tragedy and comedy. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So that's, yeah. that's cool. And the, and the chess, the chess board, you know, she she teaches him about like the um, the game being competitive, dominating. Um, I don't know much about chess. Um, when I think about chess, I think about Scott McCloud, who talked about before he got into comics, he was obsessed with chess because it's all about math and tradition and strategy and yeah, that I think kind it's the stuff. strategy and like thinking ahead four to five moves kind mm -hmm. of thing, which is definitely something that Grendel employs. Like you know, he he his goal is this, but then he's got to you know, move his pawns here. He moves his rook here. You know, he's got his lawyers. He's got the, the bishops, you know, and he's the, he's the king. With, nah, he's got his, gra his graffiti taggers. Oh, yes. We'll get to you that. You can't later. wait for that. And then also the, the heart, the fencing uniform heart is, is in play here. Again, yeah. As well, yeah. Uh, um, and then we get, we get a scene of him at the graveyard, which I'm not really sure... I don't really feel like he was at the graveyard. Like, did he go back when she died? Then he went back to the U S did, did she die after he went back to the U S? Oh, no, no. They're together until she dies. Okay. He never tells him she knew the whole time that, that she, she was, was terminally ill. Right. Um, you know what I, you know what drawing I really like, I need to give David Mack as many compliments as I can. I love, <laughs> I really, I, I do like this page. I like that she's able to score a point on him. Right. That's pretty cool. Right. That she's, that, that definitely supports all these supernatural theories that she's a good enough fencer that she can pierce his heart with the, with the, the fencing blade or whatever it is. Um, and then I love the way the shattered glass shapes kind of right. burst out of it. And then this, um, this thing of him at the uh, at the graveyard, the face it reminds me of John Totalbun, uh, yeah, of Swamp Thing fame. So so I enjoyed that, <laughs> but seeing his like, he just looks like a twenty seven year old stud with his stubble. Yeah, I, he really I, looks way older than fourteen. Yeah. So I, I honestly I feel like. I might enjoy the story more if he looked younger, but it wouldn't, but the sex scene is so graphic that it's like, maybe, maybe it was on purpose. I don't know. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, a uh, lot of um, emotions that are brought up in this. I mean, this is, it's truly tragic. It's about, you know, falling so deeply in love that they have this, these great times and then now she's gone. And, yeah. and, and the effect that that had on changing him and, and killing Eddie and birthing Hunter and, and about how he had, well, he said, like, I was quickly discovering the essence of finality and rejecting a future of joy. And he was redesigning his face. 
of my destiny, redesigning the face of my destiny. Yeah. So again, showing the passing of Eddie, Eddie died with Joe Costa mm-hmm. and Hunter Rose was then born, who is, who took his mother's name, his, his creator's name in, in the Rose surname. Yeah. I love I love the proto Grendel fencing so cool. splash, Absolutely super cool awesome. with the broken heart. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Scud looks like Scud. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Scud. Yeah. Dude, within I mean, a good. Within a month, he'd written his first novel. I guess that's Creon. Mm-hmm. Within two, I had killed my first man. Thus, I became Hunter Rose. Beautiful. This is another black, white, and red story that I'd like to tell. We're really we're really uh, amassing our own black, white, and red, but. It would be like, you know, you've seen like the origin of Batman, you know, the first time he goes out, he's got like a ski mask on and just like gloves or whatever. So like, what if this night he went out and like blew off some steam and like, you know, he must might might not have killed somebody. Maybe he even foiled like a a, a bar brawl or like some sort of fight in the streets or something like that. But maybe he went out and was like, you know, let off some steam somewhere in this costume. Yeah, I I feel like, it's funny because in the funeral scene, he looks, you know, like grief. Everyone processes grief differently. He's very, he's alone in the funeral scene and he's very um, morose. But then like in the next scene where he's alone, naked in the bedroom, painting the masks, he's for at least one panel, he's all torn up. I, I mean, and it seems like he's trying to like do something about it. Like he's like, yeah, I don't know. I honestly, Eli, I feel like, you know, if you put this comic next to James O'Barr and The Crow, yeah, yeah, you know, sure. you're going to see, like, how to tell this story with a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot to, there's a lot to tell in the Joe Costa thing, like, because wouldn't, wouldn't people from the fencing team miss her? Uh, was not, if Jocasta, she's, not if she's a demon ghost, you know. Right. Well, yeah. Was Jocasta even a real name? Was she a fencing right. coach for the for the British team? Maybe not. Yeah. Is she? You know, was this body once that, and the demon inside of it took it over and was like, oh, the only thing useful in this person's brain is these fencing techniques. So let's use it to prime up the next um, vessel for the Grendel. Um, you know, <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot to that. And there's a lot that, you know, that's not, but I think it's a good, something good to take point. So that's basically the first four issues that would, or the first four stories that would have been the first issue of black, white, and red. If it was chronological. Yeah. I need to compliment this drawing of Jocasta Rose. Just beautiful. say something nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's I what, like, that's... I like this story. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, I think like you said, Obari. James Obari, yeah. moody, dark, like the crow. That'd be cool, so man. sick to see James Obar draw the draw Grendel. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, that's perfect. Everyone, everyone should draw Grendel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There'd be a lot of good ones. Yeah. Man. So uh, next week we'll pick up with um we might as well tell you all four. It's not it's not a big secret. We got Devil's Mark by Troy Nixie. Oh, that's a good one. So good. We got the Devils in the Punctuation by Stan Shaw. That's my Devil's absolute curse. favorite. That's your absolute favorite? That's my absolute favorite. It's, it's very I, cool. I love, I love Great it. art. Really well told. Uh, we have The Devil's Curse by the Pander Bros. Ooh. We got Devil's Coup by Tim Bradstreet. Bra- yeah, Bradstreet. So that's about what we'll get to next week. Yeah. Yeah, the, my, my recollection of the, the Bradstreet one is that it's very mob plotting heavy. Right, which and, is and, which is something I'm not great at processing, but there's a lot of story packed into that one. Yeah, and it's it's kind of told through like newspaper clippings, and it's also mm-hmm. like like Devil by the Deed was. It's big paragraphs and stuff going. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. And I feel Dude, like the, the did the Pander Brothers one. Are there ties? There's like Santa Maria wow. stuff going. It's like on? Diablo Grendel. Yeah, it's almost like yeah, it's it's like Nolans and stuff. It's really dark and and. I, I think one. that the character, I think this character shows up in Behold the Devil. I think uh, the, 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 the voodoo sorcerer guy, um, I think. Oh, I can't remember. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's, that's Stan Shaw one. Oh, I can't wait to get into that. Beautiful. 
yeah, we'll be back next week. Uh, there's a lot about, you know, like Creon and the novels and stuff. And it's also told in that way, um, just paragraphs and stuff. And we get more Jocasta boob. What could be better? <laughs> All right. Another great week of Grendelin. Keep on Grendelin, Ben. Vivat. Vivat Grendel. Another great week. <laughs> another great week. Yes. Thanks Good a lot, morning. Eli. Go out and get it. And, and hey, don't forget, uh, leave us a five out of five review there, if that's what you believe. On um, It has to I, be iTunes, five out of five. In order to enter Five out of five. <laughs> but um, you'll win a, um, a Christine Spar action figure. So leave us a comment, and uh, we'll pick the best one out in a couple months. Um, so, yeah. Come get your doll. Come get your dolls. Vivat, Ben. Vivat, Eli.